Madam Secretary, you have said many times that HUD is understaffed, and I agree with you on that, and that obviously is a barrier to effectively implementing programs. But I do want to point out to you that under the CARES Act, uh, the Office of Community Planning and Development was given substantial new funding, uh, $10 million, I believe it was. And to date, as of June 3rd, only 13.1% has been spent. So some of the problem appears to be at HUD. If we're giving you that kind of extra money to hire staff to implement the CARES Act, which was passed um, more than a year ago, and you've only spent a little over 13% of the money for salaries, there's a problem at HUD. I don't disagree with you, Senator. There is a problem at HUD. Okay. I, I absolutely agree with you 100%. What we found, uh, or let me say what, what I found when I arrived, is that um, there didn't seem to be the kind of systems in place to make sure that these funds were spent properly and timely. I agree with you. We are addressing it now. Um, and I think that you'll find that as we go through the next few months, through the assistance that we're going to provide as well as in-house, you're going to see a difference in those resources. But I, I don't disagree. Let me bring to your attention another issue. Um, the budget that is related, and it may already be on your radar screen, the budget request includes $125 million for service coordinators in the Section 202 program. And as you know, the service coordinators help link residents of eligible housing with supportive services provided by community agencies. The department funds these coordinators through a combination of direct grants and budget-based rents. So I'm pleased that our subcommittee has worked to increase funding for these counselors. But I'm concerned that there are still two open GAO recommendations to HUD related to service coordinators. And one of them relates to the fact that HUD doesn't know how many service coordinators it has. And knowing how many service coordinators HUD has seems to me to be pretty fundamental information that the department should have. So what is the department doing to, to address these open GAO recommendations? It's, it's really hard for us to decide how much money to give for how many people if you can't tell us how many people you have. I certainly appreciate that, that concern. I did have a meeting on last week with the director of GAO, we went through the top 13 concerns, the biggest ones. This was one. We are already putting in place a plan to make sure that we address them within a very short window of time. But he, uh, I think we came away from the meeting knowing that uh, we do have the information. It's just a matter of over the last period of time, no one seemed to want to get the information together and give it to them. We have the information, and we can get the information to them. Let me now turn to one final issue that I want to touch on. I may have some additional questions for the record, and that is cybersecurity. We know that cybersecurity is an increasingly critical issue. We've seen the solar winds attack, which affected nine separate departments, the Colonial Pipeline cyber attack. But it's not just big companies or the federal government that are targets. I know from my work on the aging committee that everyday Americans and particularly seniors are victims of cyber attacks. 
According to the FBI, one of the fastest growing cyber crimes is real estate wire fraud. In 2019, more than $220 million that we know of was stolen from Americans as a result of those kinds of housing-related cyber attacks. As Madam Secretary, the budget requests nearly $86 million for the Office of Housing Counseling. What is HUD going to do to help combat real estate wire fraud by using a portion of that money for that purpose? Well, let me just report that over the last few weeks, we actually did have someone working remotely open a virus on their, on their system. And so before we knew it, because we couldn't get the systems in place fast enough, 750 people had already been infected with the virus. But part of the problem was is because we outsource so much of this, because we don't have the skills in-house to do it, it took them three days to get back to us. And so we have to do two things. One is we have to make sure that those people who have the contracts or who are responsible are people that we bring in and say to them, this is not acceptable and this is our expectation, but also to have the skill in-house so that they can catch it as well. When you decide that you're going to outsource everything that is important, things like your security, and no one in-house can catch it, then there is a problem. It is just the way the system has been designed, but we need to change it and we're working on doing that. I agree that you need to improve your internal cybersecurity, um, but I hope that you will also look at ways to educate consumers about the danger of real estate wire fraud. Thank we'll you. Take, and we absolutely will.